Hello everyone, welcome to Research Hub. In this video, I will provide you some guideline on how to convert your master thesis to a journal article. If you have written a master thesis and you would like to know why you should publish it as a journal article and how you should proceed, then you will find this video very useful. So first of all, why would you like to publish in a journal? First of all, it's a more rich, more global reach and you may wonder like you know nowadays many universities provide open access publication of the master thesis itself so that could also make a global reach but then why should you publish in a journal but the thing is not many people really read this master thesis as published in an open repository and that's because we don't know if the thesis, if the find, whatever presented in the thesis are really validated. So by validation, what I mean is, I mean peer review. So in the journal, when you submit a paper to other scientists, minimum to other scientists often reviews your work and gives you feedback. And only when you pass these two other scientists or scholars in the field, then it would be accepted by, for publications in the journal by the editor, right? So in this process, whatever you've done in your research, it gets more validated. That is why we can really trust on the results of the journal articles more compared to a non peer reviewed work, which is published in a repository. Okay. So in general, having published in a journal increases more reach. And my philosophy in general is that I would like to, I would like people to read my work. So I want, my work to be read by as many people as possible. If nobody reads my work, the work has no value. So that's my principle. So I try to make sure that my works are more widely available and people can access them and read them and find them useful. Also, when you publish it in a journal, it helps you to build a scholarly profile. If you're going for a PhD, then having a publication or two it always helps in the PhD process. People know that you know how to publish, you know how to do research, so they're more likely to hire you. And you may wonder that, you know, I'm not going to do a PhD now, so you are not going to publish your thesis now. That's totally fine. But the thing is, I have seen many people who went to industry after their masters, but then after two years or after five years, they came back to do a PhD. They suddenly got interested in doing a PhD. But then if you had a paper from your master thesis, normally it helps a lot in your PhD hiring process, in your PhD, uh, in, in securing a PhD position. And if you're already interested in academia, then a journal article could really help to get academic position. In many countries, we don't really need a PhD to join as an assistant professor or lecturer. So in those cases, if you, want, if you have a publication from your thesis, it strengthens uh, your application for the academic position. But also, these publications are often highly valued in industry. Many industries, they rely on a lot of research work. They have consultancy, dedicated consultancy departments. They have con dedicated research and development departments. So if you are interested to do some work in those departments, having a publication is always beneficial. So now, what are the differences between a journal paper and a thesis? So the most important one is the length. You know, journal articles are usually between 7,000 and 8,000 words, maximum 10,000 words. It would be really difficult to find journals which publish articles which are more than 10,000 words long, including everything, including reference and everything. But you will see that most of the master thesis are often 20,000 words or something like that. The students I supervise, I always tell them that try to write between 12,000 and 15,000 words, but most of the time they end up writing 20,000 to 22,000 words. So then the thing is when you want to convert it to a journal article, then you have to cut a lot. So if you have written 20,000 to get to 10,000, you have to remove 10,000. And I don't know about others, but it really hurts. When I put a lot of effort, if I write, a, when I put a lot of effort and write a lot, and then if I have to delete all the writing that I've done, it hurts. So I think it should be similar for others as well. So that is why one of my philosophy is that I try to write very specific and very to the point and uh, try to 
uh, right most of the time what is relevant but it is totally fine you have, if you have written like 15,000 or 20,000 words so what you have to do is now we have to cut it down to 7,000 to 8,000 words or something like that and when you are cutting it down what you have to do is you have to reduce detail okay so no need to present the same thing in table and figure which is very common in master thesis the same information present in both ways then also you will see that you have written many sentences which are like you first wrote a sentence and then you write another sentence that it means that so if you have already said something then why you really need to discuss it again with it means that or in other words so these kind of sentences duplicate sentences are very common and you can remove them okay so normally we don't really need to present any two information multiple times we remove all the uh, redundant information redundant tables and figures and also in terms of tests and uh, statistical analysis sometimes you report like too many details we did this we did that and after that these and that but some of the statistical tests are very important so which we have to report but often all the things that we have done to learn this method to apply this method often they are not really relevant so you can actually remove some of those okay so normally these are some uh, guidelines that how you can actually make it shorten so the main idea here is that you have to be very precise present only relevant information and you have to bring the thesis to between 7,000 to 8,000 words uh, ideally and here are some main components of a journal article so first we will have a title and titles are normally between 18 words okay uh, some journals have a shorter limit but most journal allow up to 18 words then you have abstract abstract should not be more than 250 words I would say go for target 200 not more than 200 and then keywords you have to present four or five keywords maximum six keywords so keywords are normally I put the keywords which help people to find my article faster so when they google with the keywords then they should find my article so I try to find those relevant keywords and put it in my article and then you will have the main section where you will have an introduction which motivates the study then you will have literature review you have data and methodology results discussion conclusion references and sometimes appendix so some of the detail if you like to put in the paper which are not like very important but is still relevant you can put them in the appendix and nowadays most of the journals actually allow electronic appendix where they don't have any page limit so you can move a lot of things from your thesis to the appendix actually and provide it as a supplementary material and here one easy rule of thumb is that if you see here we have like one two three four five six seven main parts okay and if you write about 1000 words as a rule of thumb per section that you will have 7000 words so it could be like 200 plus 200 words 300 words plus minus 1000 but approximately 1000 words for each of these seven sections leads to about seven to eight thousand words right that could be a rule of thumb to start converting your thesis to a journal here i'm going to mention a little bit about the journal submission process so normally you first have to select a journal you have to pay attention to where where are you submitting one of the thing is that the easiest way is that you can actually look into your reference list the journals that appear most in your reference list that could be the journal where you can submit your work but always consult with your supervisor here we have some list abs list abdc list norwegian list so there we have some ranking of journals try to look for good journals good ranked journals and we also have some video on research hub on how to select journals so have a look on them you will find some video link below in the video description regardless of this i recommend you to always consult with your supervisor and in the journal submission process you have to prepare some documents you have to prepare some documents first one is cover later addressing the editor-in-chief of the journal where you mention that uh, where you mention the key contributions of the article and why this article is relevant for the journal then you will have a title page where you will put information about the authors of the paper so in the main paper you will have no names the, most of the paid journals they follow blind peer review process 
where the reviewers cannot know who is the authors and the authors cannot know who is the reviewer. So you cannot have any name in the main paper, but you will submit a title page where you will put your details, which can be seen by the editors of the journal, okay, but not the reviewers. And often we need some information about declaration of interest where you say that you have no conflicting interest. Recently, there are journals which request the author credit statement where you have to say who did what, which author, if you have multiple authors. Sometimes it happens that you did your master thesis, but then uh, when, the, when you start with the publication, some other peoples may also join in the process to improve the quality of the work and to convert it to the journal. So who did what work? So those you can actually mention in the author credit statement. Some journals require highlights of the paper. So there you will have like four or five bullet points mentioning the most important contributions of the, of the article. And also it's good to always know a little bit about peer review process. So what happens in the peer review process is that when you submit article to the journal, it goes to the editor in editor, editor in chief. Then the editor in chief looks into the paper and tries to decide whether to send it for peer review or not. If he thinks it, it the article is of good quality, he sends it for peer review to two anonymous reviewers. Okay. And then the reviewers accept the review request and then read through it and then give you some feedback. So the feedback comes to editor in chief, then the editor in chief again communicates the feedback to you. And your job is to respond to the feedback, make required revisions and resubmit the manuscript. Then the editor in chief again is going to send your article to the reviewers and the reviewers will check if you have addressed the comments. And then they might give some additional comments or they might recommend acceptance of the article. And then they send it back to the editor in chief and the editor in chief communicates with you. There could be multiple rounds of revisions. Okay, there could be two, three, uh, sometimes four rounds of revisions as well. Okay, so you have to be really patient in this review process and never argue with the reviewer. Try to do what they are asking. If you don't agree with any of their comments, uh, just uh, politely uh, explain why you think that uh, the comment is not uh, applicable, but never argue with the reviewers. Try to communicate nicely with them. And in this process, actually, your supervisor can help you a lot because it is likely that your supervisor is more experienced in this process. And here are some practical tips. First of all, put effort in rev revising the thesis and have no mercy. So when converting from a 20,000 thesis to a 7,000, 8,000 word article, have no mercy, remove everything that is irrelevant, okay? And try to keep only the most important and relevant things and remove all uh, redundant information. And normally you should be the first author when trying to convert it into a journal article, but always have your supervisor as the corresponding author. Add your supervisor as the second author and the corresponding author. You, if you have multiple supervisors, add both of them the co-supervisors and the main supervisors. Sometimes it may happen that in the review process or in the conversion to journal article process, you may add one or two people from the outside of the supervisory board and who may also join as a co-author. That is totally fine, but make sure that you have yourself as the first author and your supervisors as the corresponding author. And normally when you submit the article, uh, Keep patience. The review process can take three months to up to two, three years. We recently got a paper published which was under review for four years and then we got uh, accepted in a paper, but accepted in a journal. But it's a, it was a good experience. The paper improved a lot in four years and also it's a good journal. So it was win-win. And have the mindset to work on multiple rounds of revision. So, you know, it might happen that after you send the paper to the journal, you are working on something else, but it will come back to you. So have the mindset to really work on the revisions. But normally the revisions does not really take much of your time. You know, often you will see that the revisions uh, take one week of work or something like that. So it, it, I, I believe it should be manageable even if you are working full time in an in, in industry or in, in some other jobs, right? And pay attention to where you submit. Don't submit in fake journals. You have to be really careful about it. If you publish it in a fake journal, then all the efforts you have put are in vain, okay? They are of no use. 
because there are many fake journals. All, again, we have some videos on that, how to identify good journals. You will find link below uh, in the video description. So have a look on that. Don't publish in fake journals. And thank you for watching. I hope you find this video useful. And if so, share with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to Research Hub.